Hi, I'm Rob from Rob's Been Running. I hope you're doing well, staying safe and training hard. We're back with a shoot, another shoe review today, and this time it's from a brand that I've never run in before, so I've been very keen to try these out. Today, we will be reviewing the New Balance Herrero V8. I've heard plenty of good things about this shoe um, from the previous version. It's been on my radar for a long time, um, so, as long, so as soon as this uh, version came out, I snapped it up as soon as I could. So let's get started with the first impressions of the New Balance Herrero V8. The Herrero V8 is a popular shoe from New Balance. It forms part of a decent offering from the brand when it comes to road and trail shoes. The shoe is made for, for uh, mixed terrain uh, trails in drier weather, so it's not for a UK winter. Um, the shoe should be perfect when you cross over from tarmac to trail and back again. So let's check out some facts and figures about the shoe. So this shoe weighs in at 318 grams in the UK 9, that's 17 grams heavier than the previous model unfortunately, although it doesn't feel particularly heavy in my hand. Uh, the heel offset is 8mm, so you've got uh, 32mm on the heel, 24mm on the forefoot. It comes in two fitting widths, standard and wide fit, uh, these are standard. And New Balance say this shoe is true to size, but uh, we'll see about that. I've purchased mine in the 10.5, so let's, let's see how that goes. The outsole of the Herrero uh, V8 is clad in the Vigram, uh, Vibram, should I say, EcoStep natural outsole, and that's composed of more than 90% uh, petroleum free substances, uh, which is more env environmentally considerate, um, but still delivering reliable grip um, whilst reducing, reducing ecological footprint, um, which can only be a good thing, obviously. The lug depth on here is about 4.5 mil, not particularly deep, um, and it's got a stippled uh, layout uh, for maximum performance. Um, this is a new lug construction from the previous model of the shoe, so they must have uh, noticed something there. So the midsole of the Herrero is uh, using New Balance's uh, highly cushioned Fresh Foam X, so that's what you find on their road shoes. Uh, which contains approximately 40% bio-based materials, uh, reducing the carbon footprint of the shoe. And it's apparently the softest fresh foam yet from a New Balance. I wouldn't know because I'm not running a New Balance before, but we'll see. Uh, there's no rock plate in this shoe, um, which is a pet hate of mine, but we'll see if the cushioning from the Fresh Foam X is enough to protect against the sharp stones and rocks on the trails. The upper of this shoe has been made from close-knit fabric you can see that there for a highly breathable performance and protection. The, cut, the tongue is gusseted in the shoe uh, and lightly padded for comfort uh, across the top of the, sh uh, the shoe, protecting your shoe from those laces pulling through. The lacing system is a traditional flat lacing system <clears throat> with built in loops, which you can see here. That's just get a secure lockdown across the midfoot, um, so they should help with that. Um, there are plenty of overlays here surrounding the shoe as you go around the shoe uh, just to give it improved durability and a really good sturdy toe bumper on the front, quite a solid toe bumper actually, so that should be pretty good on the trails as well, just protecting from trail debris. Moving to the back of the shoe, uh, the shoe does have a uh, nicely padded heel cup, so it's decent moderate level of padding there, nothing too, not too much, not too little. And the heel cup has some good structure, but there's also some movement in there. So it's not going to be too stiff, so we shouldn't get any uh, Achilles rubbing uh, when, we're the, when we're out on the run. Hopefully we can get a good secure fit from this shoe, so we'll see. The Herrero comes in at £140 on the New, uh, New Balance website, uh, which is reasonable for today's market. Um, and it comes in multiple colorways for both men and women. So we took these shoes out on a couple of runs recently. Um, covering 22, 23 miles in two days. So let's set up a look and see how that went.
Okay, about four miles in now to the run, and I have to say, so far so good. Uh, I'm recording this on my phone because the GoPro's just died, unfortunately. Um, one of those things with GoPros tells you how much battery is and then lies to you about it. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Um, I've uh, run it on some varying conditions, um, gave that outsole a really thorough testing already. Um, notice it was very sticky on the uh, on the concrete when we were before, before we got to the uh, the trails, and then it's pretty well much handled everything in here. Um, you know, with uh, loose stones, sharp rocks, um, mud, gravel, um, and obviously this shoe isn't designed for deep mud, so I've stayed clear of that mainly because I don't want wet feet when I'm running in this tomorrow. Testing it for the day two, um, so yeah, I've stayed clear of that. Uh, but I must say, really grippy shoe. The midsole um, feels great, really bouncy. Um, it's quite nice and soft. It feels like a shoe you could do a lot of miles in um, and plenty of energy return. So yeah, re really, really good feel so far. And the upper, uh, upper's fitting good. Um, as I said, the upper is a, uh, it's a standard fit. So it's not particularly wide, uh, but it's quite comfortable. Um, and I would say, Shoes are pretty good. Um, on the website it says that they're true to size. I would say they might come up slightly short, but the 10 and a half, my normal size is still fitting okay. So um, we'll see how that feels on the long run tomorrow. Um, but it's feeling all right so far, so pretty good. Um, but yeah, we've got a couple of miles left to do. Um, obviously as the GoPro's died, I'm not gonna be able to do too much of the way of filming, but um, we'll catch some more filming tomorrow anyway. But I will speak to you in a bit. So we made it back. So uh, pretty successful uh, first day of testing, and uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you tomorrow when we're going to take it on a much longer run. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. It's day two of the testing of the Herrero V8, and uh, the weather's not great. But let's get cracking and see how this perform shoe performs on a long run today. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay, so this morning we are doing our long run um, on the towpath near Waltham Abbey. Uh, that's on the border, border of uh, London, Essex. And uh, yeah, just uh, basically running some gravelly stuff, a bit of tarmac, uh, a little bit of mud, but easy running today. Um, that's right, try and test the, uh, the shoe out on this type of terrain as well. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But, uh, again, as I said yesterday, shoes nice to cushion. So, should make for a comfortable run. Let's see how it goes. Catch up in a bit. Okay, so about uh, halfway through the, the long run today, or maybe just over halfway, 
and she's performing well um, as I said yesterday that uh, fresh foam X compound in the midsole there is uh, is really nice and bouncy um, really cushioned this is definitely a, a, uh, a shoe for the long stuff um, long dry stuff it's uh, it's handling today's conditions fine because most of it is either gravel or hard standing there's a bit of mud around um, but it's not deep mud so the shoes handling it are right the grip on those lugs all right the lugs are not the deepest but it's still grippy it's at the end of the day it's from mega grip um, so um, yeah it's pretty good um, obviously I think as I said yesterday these lugs would struggle with the deep stuff and the mud would get stuck into those those little lugs but um, but actually this shoe is not designed for that so we can't critique it on that um, we can uh, we can judge it upon what it's been made for and that is for for the uh, the dry months of the year so um, but yeah it's it's certainly a nice shoe uh, very comfortable regarding the sizing i think i said yesterday that it comes up just you know on the website they said true to size i think it comes up they're just a little bit short of that um so you might want to go up half a size um at the end of the day it's, it's fine for me it's it's not causing me really any trouble with the with it being uh size it is but uh yeah maybe i'll go up half a size um but yeah great comfortable shoes so, so far so good um and I think it'll just carry on, you know, being consistent. Um, so yeah, really, really good, really happy with it. Um, but obviously we'll we'll wrap it up when we get back um, once we've completed this run. Um, so I'm gonna get cracking because uh, I'm getting pretty wet with this rain and uh, I will see you in a bit. So we are about uh, three quarters of a mile from home and uh, yeah, ready to get this review wrapped up. So let's get cracking, do the last three quarters of a mile and I'll see you back at the flat. Okay, so we're back. Um, so overall, I think the Herrero V8 uh, has performed really, really well. You'll see from the, the footage there that the, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was performing particularly well, particularly on the um, on the dry stuff. So what the shoes made for, and um, tarmac as well. I must say that the transition from road to tarmac and back, as stated, uh, was incredibly good. Um, the outsole of this shoe is incredibly sticky. So even though those lugs are quite short, you'll see them here. Look, they're not big at all. Um, they are incredibly sticky and grippy. So. Obviously, when we were going through the forest on day one, um, the mud was getting stuck in there a little bit, and that's just because that mud has gone a bit, you know, quite tacky. Um, so it was sticking in the grips a little bit, but again, the shoe's not designed for that. However, when I was running in the mud, I didn't feel like I was slipping around all over the place. Um, so again, that Vibram outsole um, doing a good job. So really happy with the way that that outsole performed. Um, the Fresh Foam X cushioning is is oh, well, quite wonderful. Well, it's wonderful, basically. Um, I would say it's probably one of the softest cushion shoes that I've ever run in. Um, I mean, you can see that the, the, the cushion in there on that shoe, nice and soft. I guess Hoka esque in terms of its cushioning. Um, you could do miles in this. Um, that cushioning so is really really comfortable. Um, I didn't feel the stones coming through, so the absence of a rock plate uh, wasn't such an issue, um, which is good. Um, obviously, we'll monitor that and, and see whether that plays a part in some future races that we've got. Um, well, I'll, I'll take these out in some races uh, and see how they perform in there. But 
all in all, the fresh foam really good, plenty of rebound, um, and a lovely cushion ride. Um, so that was that was all positive. Again, the upper, nice lightweight upper, um, really breathable. Um, my feet got soaked at one point, so these drain really, really well. I can attest to that. Um, and yeah, incredibly comfortable, really. The, let's pull out the insole here. Nothing special about the insole, but it is relatively cushioned. It's not like a boomerang sole, so it's just a standard one, but it is nice and comfy. So that, that was all positive, really. Um, it didn't need, to be fair, it didn't need additional cushioning. So let's pop that in there. Nice and comfy around here, had no issues around the heel cup there, all good. Uh, managed to get a nice lockdown in the laces. So this laces system, and I quite like the flat laces because they are very comfortable across the top of your foot anyway. Um, but along with this, this tongue, um, yeah, it performed really well. Uh, really nice, uh, comfortable. Um, I did say actually at the start that the tongue is gusseted in the shoe. It isn't, it's a standard tongue. Um, I thought it was gusseted. Um, but that was just because of these loops for the laces. However, tongue didn't move around at all, so this held uh, quite firmly. Surprised that they didn't gusset the tongue, actually. Um, most shoes do these days, or make a booty construction. Um, New Balance have decided not to do that for whatever reason. But again, tongue stayed still in its place, so didn't cause me any problems, so just an observation, really. Um, as I said, got a good lockdown, really comfortable around here. I guess the only thing I would say is New Balance said that this is true to size. I slightly disagree with that. I think it comes up slightly short. Didn't cause me a problem, but I did feel that my toes were closer to the edge, the end of that shoe than I thought they were going to be. Um, so next time I think I would go up half a size uh, for me to a UK 11, um, just to take note of that. Plenty of room in the toe box. Otherwise though, the width of the shoe was fine for me, even though I have quite a wide foot. So maybe the wide um, fit would even be even better. Uh, maybe I'd love to try that at some point. But yeah, otherwise all positive. Uh, I mean, I've obviously given these a good clean, so um, that's all good. Um, and they've come up nice, but uh, they were pretty muddy at the end of it, um, as you'll see in the pictures. But yeah, really positive running the shoe. Um, all in all good. So. If you want to know more about the New Balance Herrero V8, you can check that out on the link below this video. Um, and uh, yeah, see if you can get, pick up a pair for yourself. Um, as I said, really comfortable shoe. I will certainly be running more miles in those in the drier months, across the summer, etc. So uh, all good. Um, more stuff coming up on the channel soon. More reviews around, um, there's more shoes coming up. Um, we're looking at getting um, the next pair of normal Tamir, um, the 2.0. Just waiting for them to become available in the UK. They are, have been released, but they're not available yet. Um, so I think they're coming in April. So keep an eye out for those. We've got some Rab shorts um, to review. Uh, I've been running in those and I run my last race in those. Um, so we'll be reviewing those on the channel soon as well. And of course, we're training for the uh, UTS 50 currently. So uh, we've just started training for that, specific training. I do, unfortunately, um, have a little bit of an injury, which I'm uh, getting some rehab on at the moment. So um, I have to be careful. It's an injury to my patella in my left knee. Um, fortunately, not too bad. I'm still able to run, but I'm having to do quite a, uh, a few exercises and bits and bobs with, the, with the, uh, my physio, John Winters. Um, so you can check John's uh, uh, clinic out below. I'll leave a link in the description as well for that, just in case you're looking for another physio. Um, but yeah, other than that, all good. Um, that's it for today. I will see you on the channel soon. Please like, share, subscribe, and all of the good stuff if you like this video. But for now, that's it. So train hard, race hard, have fun. Until next time, see you soon. Oh,